Hi everybody. Today we're going to be looking at the concept of happiness. This is an important one to study in psychology because so much of psychological research has historically focused on the unpleasant elements of human behavior. We get research into why people become violent, why people get divorced, why people do drugs, what causes mental illness. All of those are absolutely critical questions for us to study, but it's also important for us to look at the flip side. There's an entire field of psychology called positive psychology, which very much focuses on the good in human behavior. So we might ask questions like, why do some people actually become stronger after trauma? What's the secret of those couples who remain happily married after 50 years? And as we're going to ask today, what makes some people happier than others? The first variable that we'll look at is money. Now, many of you have probably been told that money can't buy happiness, but let's face it, you'd probably be quite happy if you won the lottery. And research shows that money does matter up to a point. Specifically, money matters to the degree that it buys people peace of mind. In other words, the degree that money gets them things like a stable place to live or a good health insurance, plus the ability to have some free time and discretionary spending rather than having to work all the time to get by. Up to a certain point, money matters. After that, it starts mattering less and less. If you take somebody who makes $10 million a year and double their salary, They'll be happy about it, but it probably won't affect their happiness very much because they already could do whatever they wanted to do. Whereas if you take someone who's making $20,000 a year and double their salary, then that obviously might make a huge difference to their overall happiness. The second thing we can look at is marriage. It turns out that marriage is positively correlated with happiness. So on average, married people are, in fact, happier than single people. However, it's critical to note that this doesn't mean that marriage causes people to be happier. In fact, it's entirely possible that the correlation, at least in part, works the other way around. Happy people are more likely to attract and keep long-term romantic partners. This is all complicated by the fact that married people tend to be happier than divorced people or single people, but people in unhappy marriages are even less happy than that but we still see an overall correlation because there are a lot more happily married couples out there than there are unhappily married couples. A third variable related to happiness is social support. Having support from friends or family is very strongly positively correlated with happiness and in fact is also correlated with living a longer and healthier life. Next up is spirituality and religion. I'm not talking here about any one specific religion. It's not like one of them is good for happiness and another is problematic. But in general, for many people, spirituality and religion are going to be a comfort for them. It may be a source of social support. They may feel better because they feel connected to some sort of higher power or higher purpose. And for many people, the rituals associated with religion can bring them comfort and help to reduce stress. But again, this is a general statement. This correlation doesn't mean that all people would be happier if they suddenly joined an organized religion. The last thing I want to address in terms of determinants of happiness is that there's a lot of research suggesting that we have a baseline level of happiness. And even when people experience big life events, they have a tendency to return back in the direction of that baseline. Here, for example, you can see the results of a study published in 2007 where the researchers followed a large sample of people and found that after big life events, such as marriage or widowhood, people have a tendency to return back in the direction of their original baseline level of happiness. This pattern is seen in other research, too. For example, there is research on people who win big lottery prizes and people who become paralyzed. And all of these results show that people tend to return back toward a baseline. They don't necessarily wind up at the exact same point, but they go at least in the direction of that original baseline. 